Is it worth it to become a software developer in 2021? In this video, we're gonna go over salaries, the job market, and what kind of people actually end up becoming software developers. But first, what is a software developer? Software developers create applications or systems that run on computers or other computerized devices. They could be creating code for a number of different applications. Mobile software developers focus on creating code and creating applications for smartphones. There are video game developers that focus on creating the latest and greatest video games, such as The Witcher 3. There are software developers that focus just on the user interfaces of different applications. And there's also software developers that completely focus on deploying an application to the cloud through AWS, Google Cloud, or some other cloud service. And the list doesn't end there. Software developers are also involved in cryptocurrencies. They're also involved in creating operating systems and more. So what kind of salary can a software developer expect in 2021? The truth is software developers are seeing really solid wage growth year to year. In 2012, the average base salary for a software developer was $90,470. This rose to $109,950 in 2020. And this is the average yearly base salary. It doesn't include overtime. And this is a national salary across the United States. If this trend were to continue by 2025, the average base salary for a software developer would be around $130,000 per year. And this would rise to almost $150,000 in 2030. But this is an average national salary. Certain parts of the country tend to pay software developers a lot more than others. And certain countries tend to pay software developers a lot more than others. Globally, I looked at two other countries. In Australia, the average base salary for a software developer is around $91,000, one converted to USD. And in Canada, it's around $95,000 when converted to USD. Within the San Jose, California metro area, the average base salary for a software developer, and this doesn't include bonuses and stock options, we'll talk about this a little bit later because Google and Amazon both offer stock options on top of base salaries, but the base salary, the average base salary in Silicon Valley is around $157,000 per year for a software developer. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, it's around $145,000. Seattle, around $140,000. And in the tri-state area, the New York City metro area, the average base salary is around $124,000 per year. So the Northern California and Seattle metro areas are definitely edging the average base salary up when compared to other metro areas. And the reason for this is companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft tend to pay their software developers a lot more than other companies. Within Google, an entry-level software developer earns around $190,000 for total compensation, and that is base salary plus stocks plus bonus. And if that same software developer gets promoted twice to an L5, the total compensation is almost $400,000 per year, and it really goes up from there. A level eight at Google earns over a million dollars per year in total compensation. Similar things are going on at amazon.com. Total compensation starts at around 160,000 increases to over 300,000 after two promotions. So as you can see, software development can be extremely lucrative if you're working for a big tech company. If you were to compare the average base salary of a software developer against some of the engineering fields, software developers do pretty well, but they are definitely beat out by petroleum engineers, nuclear engineers, computer hardware engineers, and aerospace engineers. So that covers the compensation of software developers kind of across the country. But what is the job market like? Is it a great idea in 2021 to go into software development? Are there new jobs being created every single year? The number of jobs for software developers has been increasing. In 2012, there were about 1.4 million employed software developers. This grew to 1.8 million, a 400,000 gain in employment for software developers just in eight years. Not only that, the government is anticipating a 22% gain in software developers over the next 10 years. This means by 2030, the government is projecting 2.2 million employed software developers in 2030. And these are just employed software developers. This doesn't include the vast number of freelance developers that own their own business that are 1099 contractors. So there's actually even more employed software developers than this. And to really show how crazy the job market is for software developers, let's compare the number of employed software developers against the 16 engineering fields that the government surveys every single year. As you can see, there are vastly more employed software engineers 
in 2020 than there were mechanical engineers, industrial engineers, civil engineers. Even if you combined each of the 16 engineering fields, it would still kind of be on par with the number of employed software developers. There are vastly more employment opportunities in software than in traditional engineering fields. Also to gauge the demand, it's really great to look at the number of job postings on different job boards and to see how many uh, jobs are being hired by companies at this point in time. So on indeed.com, I found around 70,000 job postings for software developers. Indeed.com had about 135,000 job postings and LinkedIn had around 93,000 job postings. So there is a lot of opportunity for software developers in 2021. It is an extremely hot job market and it will most likely continue to be for years to come. The other great thing about becoming a software developer is the barrier to entry. There is a very low barrier to entry to, to working as a software developer. According to the Occupational Information Network, 88% of computer programmers just have a bachelor's degree. So software developers have really good income potential, very good job prospects, and the barrier to entry is pretty low. In fact, many software developers just get into the industry with a coding bootcamp. I definitely did, it worked for me. I did Coding Dojo back in 2016, and I transferred from, becoming, from being a cartographer to becoming a software developer. And I have been an employed software developer for about five years now. So we've covered salary, we've covered the job market, we've covered barrier to entry. The next thing is who should become a software developer? How can you tell if you would even enjoy this kind of work? One thing you can do is take a Myers-Briggs personality test and figure out your type. The Myers-Briggs company has discovered that the most likely Myers-Briggs personality type to become a software developer is the INTJ, also known as the architect. Other types that are attracted to this occupation include the ENTJ, the commander, the INTP, the thinker, and the ENTP, the debater. Notice that all four types prefer thinking over feeling. So the answer is yes. It is a great time to become a software developer. The future looks extremely bright for software developers going forward. There's going to be increasingly more and more job growth, especially in the fields of machine learning and AI. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out my electrical engineering video. If you're considering software development, you might as well also consider some of the other engineering fields. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.